All right, I'm going to start up. Ty, you're the only one who is uh, in the meeting right now, just so you know. And I'm, again, as always, going to go over what I went over this morning. My guess is this, this uh, lecture isn't going to last much more than an hour. All right, and we spent, uh, today I wanted to go over the Brick Breaker version one and version two. Um, okay. <clears throat> But yes, yesterday, just so you know, I taped the session that I had with you in the afternoon. But um, when I went home to try to produce it, it this this happened. This is the fourth time this has happened in about three thousand videos. It came up and it said it was corrupted. So I'm running software on it now to see if I can fix it. But I don't know if it'll fix or not. So what I did yesterday was I went home and I fixed. That's that. That's why I said improved. I don't know if you'll see it, think it's fixed or not, but the maze game, and then we're going to do version one of a brick breaker game, and then I'll talk about what we're going to do for the last day tomorrow. So okay. let me um, start. All right. Can you see the screen where it says game over here? On the yes. Okay, great. Okay. Well, yesterday when we were working on the maze game, let me go back to the maze game, we were working on it when I finished, people in the morning said they wanted a few things added. The first thing they said they wanted was some kind of a timer so they knew how long it was going to take them. Second, they wanted some kind of a help screen or a splash screen or something else so that uh, you know people could look at it and know what the game was about. And then lastly, if you played the game with another person, mm -hmm. what, se what seemed to be happening was whatever, whatever one finished first, the other one wasn't going right, to, you know, the, the other uh, player was not going right to the maze. And I think I fixed all those. So I'm going to run this and then show you what I did. So okay. this isn't, by no means is it perfect. Here's my splash screen. Don't worry about the hooray the monkey one. I still don't know why that's on there. But you can see now it's running and it's, it's giving you time. So I okay. did add a timer and I'm gonna explain how I did that in just a minute. All right, and whether the monkey ends first or whether the elephant ends first, they should both at the same time, they should both go uh, to, to the next maze. All right, so I wanna show you what I did in order to do this. So first of all, as you might guess, I added a new screen, and this was a splash screen, all right? Maybe splash screen wasn't the greatest name for it. It's the one I use, so how's that? But um, let's see, let me get this smaller. There we go, all right. So what I, what I did here was in this splash screen that you see, I literally went in to Microsoft Word and created this. You know, hello and welcome to my amazing maze game, et cetera. I went out and found images of the monkey, banana, the, uh, the elephant, elephant, apple, et cetera. All right, so I put all that stuff in there and I tried as best I could to map up that color with this color. They're pretty close. They're not exact, but it's pretty close. All yeah. right, and then, and then the code for that basically just said, Okay, when the program starts, in other words, when clicked, when you click the flag here, I created a new variable and that new variable is the timer that's up here. So I hide that variable when the game first starts. And then okay. I, brought, I broadcast a message called hide me. What hide me does is it hides the monkey, it hides the maze, it hides the apple, it hides the elephant, and it hides the banana. So we're, when we start, we have just the blue screen that has in front of it this. And that's all. That's what I wanted to do when the game started. So okay. then to make sure that the splash screen or that screen that you saw just a second ago was in the middle, I moved it to zero, zero, which is the middle or the origin. Then I said, show, wait for about five seconds, then hide it. Then I want to show, I want to bring maze back. So I broadcasted show maze. So let's go to the maze. 
And you'll notice now when I broadcast show maze, this before was when you click the green flag. But I only, when I click, click the green flag, the only thing I want to have happen is the splash screen to show and everything else to be hidden. All right. Okay. So I change this to when I receive the show maze. So I switch here to the first maze and then show it. And then I put it, make sure it's right in the middle of the screen and I call timer fun. All right. So at, remember at the beginning, the, the maze will be hidden. That's this hide me. So this timer fun, it's pretty simple. I created a new variable under my variables that's called time taken. You know, I could have called it timer. I could have called it anything. There is a timer that is available in Scratch, but I had problems using it, so I made my own. I thought that was cleaner anyway. So when you, when you create this thing called uh, timer fun here, what it does is it sets the time this timer up here to zero, all right? And mm -hmm. then it shows it, and then it puts it into a loop forever, which basically says, wait a second, change the time, and then show it. Wait a second, change the time, and then show it. Wait a second, etc. Now, sometimes when you run okay. it, it runs perfectly like I showed you before. See that? You can see how it's running. Other times, yeah. if I stop the run and run it again, what'll happen is it'll show half a second. Okay, see how it's 0 0.5, 1 point. It's still correct, but it should be reading 4 instead of 4.5. But it, it, sometimes it works right, sometimes it doesn't. And part of the reason for that, if you care, part of the reason for that is notice I'm using a second and a half second here. If I take that half second out, it goes too fast. And no. if I, I try changing that number a bunch, of, you know, making it smaller, making it bigger, et cetera, and, but there's a little bit of a lag between the time the computer gets the message and the time it takes to write it out and the time it takes to appear on the screen. That's why I had to do it like this. This, this isn't ideal and it's not really the way I wanted to do it, but it does, it works for lack of better. All right. Also, when I received the next maze message, I wanted to make sure that I call this timer thing. So I reset the timer. Now, as always, and I was telling this to the students this morning, it's your game. So for instance, if you wanted to have, you, if you wanted to see how long it took you to get through all eight mazes, not just the first one, you could take that line off. <clears throat> and then the timer would keep going through all eight mazes, you know, as an example. But there's a lot of things that you can do. I think I mentioned this uh, yesterday, and I don't know if I did to you or not, but if I go out to Google, and I just type in mazes, all right? You'll, you'll start to see when you look, free printables, you know, there's mazes, look at, there's one that looks like a cat. So you can get mazes that do just about anything. And there's also, if I go out here and type in maze generator, uh, I gotta go out to Google again. There's, there's a problem with my search engine, but so maze generator. There is an actual site out there. It's mazegenerator.net. And if you go out to that, you can create your own mazes. All right. If you want to do that. So that's just another way that if you wanted to, you could change the game. All right. If okay. it, that's what you wanted to do. As far as the other things that I did, what I found was for the monkey right here, and mm -hmm. this, remember, this is this is the monkey right here, and this is, well, some code is missing, and I don't know why. There it is. Oops, try that again. Move that up. I want these to touch. There. All right, so for the monkey, for the monkey to win, rather, what we had said there was, I'm going to constantly be waiting, okay, and okay. if if I'm so this is going to be hidden, and if I'm if I'm touching the bananas, I know I won. So I shout hooray, play the cheer, get ready for the next game, and broadcast next maze to go to the next one. The point is that code right here 
should be pretty much the same code as the stuff I'm using here. Wow, my code has just disappeared. Okay, it should have been the same code that I used for the elephant, except for the fact that when I'm doing the monkey, it'll say touching bananas. And when I'm doing the elephant, it'll say um, touching apple. And the message will be different and you know what gets, you know, et cetera. But the point is, I didn't have these two lines right here. I didn't have a line in for the elephant that said, get elephant ready and broadcast next maze. That's why it was going slower than the other one was. All right. But basically okay. it was working. All right. Now, again, you saw that at the beginning that if you are interested, um, and I also sent it on the email today, I have a working version of that. And you can take you can take a look at it, all right. Okay. And it, you can mix it because people were mixing it this morning. So what I'd like you to do is, if you would please, is start up a brand new project. I called mine Brick Breaker V1. You can call it whatever you'd like to call it, of course. Okay. I'll start a new one. All right. Once you do, then go down to your sprites here, and we're going to add three sprites. So first, click on the bottom one and choose uh, paddle, and really the order in which you do these doesn't matter, but choose paddle, and of course that is in alphabetic order. There's the paddle right there. All right. Okay. I Next, see go back again, and this time choose, choose tennis ball, so that's under the paddle, of course. There it is right here. Okay. And then finally, Go in and what I used for my bricks, and you don't have to use this, of course, you could use whatever you'd like. I use this one here, this button too. So when you get done, you'll have on your screen, you should then have three different sprites. All right, the brick, which you can't see on mine right now, don't worry about it. The paddle, which is right here, and the ball, which is right here. All right? All right. Okay. Then what we'll do next is we're going to create two of our own sprites. Okay, so I'm going to remove these two. I've got them already, but I'm going to remove them anyway. Not, in fact, I'll keep them. I think it'll make it easier because I've got code in there and stuff already. So um, for the first one, go down here, down in the bottom right-hand corner. Instead of choose a sprite, click on the paintbrush. Okay. All right, and that should bring up this that you see on the screen right here. Now, is that what you see? Again, you can use any colors you want. And in fact, I'll use purple here. That's fine. So I'm going to click, you know, I'm going to click over here on the T, which is my text tool, and click somewhere around the middle. And then I just typed in game, game over. Game. And as soon as you type in game over and you click off of it, you get the, you get, you know, you get the, the little notches right here. Click on one of the, like the one in the bottom right hand corner and just move this out, make it bigger. Okay. So it's something like this, about that size. It could be a little smaller. It doesn't really matter. And I want it centered so it's somewhat in the middle. Okay. Okay. So I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use the one I've already made. But again, any color you want, it really and truly doesn't matter. Then go to the code window for this. And there's two things that we want to put in here. The first okay. is, and I'll, let's just, I'll just add these again, just so you see them. Go to your events, go to your when clicked, and you don't want that game over to message to show at the beginning. So as you'd probably guess, you hide it. So go over to your looks, find hide, and just hide it. Okay. All right. So that's the first one. Then next, go down, toward, go down towards the bottom of your control, and there's a thing over there that says, when I receive, down here someplace, is that the one? No, that's when I start as a clone. Um, it might be, it's over here. There you go, when I receive. It's down near the, right near the bottom of the events. It's when I receive 
Right now, yours might say balance. It might say something else. It doesn't matter. I see it. Okay. And then click over here, and you're going to have to add. Yours probably doesn't show show game over. All right. So since it probably does not, click on new message, and then type in there show game over. Okay. So, so when you get done, it'll look like this right there okay when the show game message show game over message when you, when it's received you want to do thing two things you want to actually show the message so bring in a show that's in the purple looks category and then on the very bottom or near the very bottom of your uh, control area, there's a stop all. And literally what that means is when the program is running and uh, we're done, okay, stop. Stop. Okay. okay. Now, we're of course, we're not done yet, but I do want you to realize that's the message that should come up. So I'll, I'll show you this because, again, I'm working with the one that's already finished. But when I, I'm going to let the ball go down, that's what well, that's what should happen. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Then we're going to create another one. So again, go to your sprites, choose a sprite, go to the paintbrush again. This one I made green. Again, you can make it any color you want. Okay. Okay. So again, I made it green, and again went to the text tool, click somewhere near the middle and said, you win, all right? And again, made it bigger, moved it in so it was somewhere pretty close to the middle of the screen right here, just like this. Okay. All right, and you really should uh, click on here and you should name rename your Sprite. So the first one you created, if it was Sprite 1, now it should be called something like Game Over. The next one then can be called you win. Don't put the explanation points in the in the name. Okay. All right. So yours looks something like this. Let's go to the code for it. And the code is different. This is all the code. So let's look at it from the beginning. You want to bring in a when clicked. So go to your events, find a when clicked, and drag it out. Okay. All right. Then if we you probably haven't done this yet, so Go over to your variables, click on the make a variable, and, okay. choo and choose, I just type, I call mine score. Okay. All right. Cool. Then after you've done that, you click OK. One of the things down here is set my variable to zero. Well, it's not my variable. You want to set score to zero. Okay. All right. And just like before, you don't want that message to show when the game starts. So you're going to go down to, the, to your uh, looks and you're going to find the hide and you want to make it hide. Okay. Now, this one's a little bit different because you win the game if you knock over all 28 bricks that we're going to make. So what okay. you need to do is you need to go down to your control and you need to find, it's about two thirds of the way down, five or six from the bottom. There's a wait until. So you wanna bring in that. Okay. All right, then you wanna go over to your operators tab and you wanna find this equal one, which is seven or eight down right there. And you wanna drag oh. that in right there. I see it. Okay. And what you want is you want to wait until, go back to your variables, you need to grab the score from there and drag that in here. And when the score is 28, because you're going to have 28 bricks, you've won. 28. That you manually type in. Okay. So that now you've won, so you want to show the I win message. And again, you want one of those stop alls because stop all. you're going to be finished. Now, I don't know if you 
played a game like like Brick Breaker before or not, and if you have how good you are, I'm not that good. So what I did was when I was testing it, I changed it to just three. Okay. Why? So when I run it and I start the game, all I have to do is knock over three bricks. So there's one, there's two, there's three. I win. See that? So I'm okay. able I'm able to test the you win, and I'm gonna let the, let this fall. I can test the game over. So I know by looking at these, the you win works, the game over works, and my script is stopping at that time. That's good. Okay. That's what I wanted to have happen. All right. So yeah. stuff that you've got in here. After you've tested that, I'm gonna set it back to 28. I want it to be a real game, of course. All right. So I've yeah. given you the code. I've given you the code for the game over. I've given you the code for the uh, you win. So let's jump into let's jump into the brick. No, let's let that's a little longer. Let's do the uh, let, let's do the paddle next. Okay. It's all the code for the paddle. If you haven't changed the name of the paddle to paddle, it really should have been paddle anyway, because that's when you saved it. Unless you change it, it should be called paddle. But yeah, it's paddle. What do we want, what do we want to say here? Well. I, I want to go through all these. The one click should make sense, all right? Mm -hmm. But what you'll want to do is, I think this is in the blue area, you want, to, you want to do a set rotation style. I think that's here near the bottom. Yeah, it's near the bottom. Okay. For, now, yeah. there's, there's, there's three things you can set this to, all right? And they are left, right, don't rotate, and all around. Now, okay. just so you know this, the don't rotate means that when this is moving, it's not able to rotate. Now, what is that? What the heck does that mean? I want to show you exactly what it means. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another sprite. Uh, you don't you don't do this because I'm going to remove it right away. So I'm okay. just going to come in here and I'm going to add another sprite. And I'm going to add our old friend the cat. All right. So there's the cat. So what I'm going to do is for the cat, I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to set the rotation to left, right. Okay, so watch what happens. I guess I've got to put a, uh, well, he's going to come and walk all the way till the end. Okay, when he gets to the end, instead of looking to the right like this, he's going to look to the left and start going that way. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Right. If, if instead of left, right, I set it to all around, he's going to start moving almost in a circle. Okay. But if I choose the left or the don't rotate, which is the one we want, the cat's not going to do anything. Now, why am I telling you that? Because we want to use for this one, we want to make sure that we choose don't rotate because we don't want the paddle to move. It, it should move back and forth, but we shouldn't rotate it so it moves in a circle or we don't want it to flip over, which is basically what it'll do if you do a left right. All right. Okay. So we want it to be don't rotate. Then we put in a forever block. Again, you probably know this, but the forever block is down inside of our controls. Okay. And what we want it to do then is we want to point towards the mouse pointer. Found that. Then we want to move 10 steps. And then we want to set Y to negative 140. What that's basically all going to do is it's going to help make sure that when we start the game, that our mouse is going to base our, our, our paddle basically is going to be in the beginning. And what you'll see with the tennis ball in a minute is it's going to fall down like this and we're ready to handle it. All right. You got all that code? Yes. All right. Then let's go to the tennis ball. Okay, and I'm gonna again. I've got to move this over a little, and I want to see what else I've got here for code. I've got three things of code here, so I'm gonna put them all on top of one another. Whoops, not there. What? A, come on. I'm gonna put them all up on top of one another, and then I'll make them bigger. All right. So here's the first one. So again, this is for the tennis ball. And it's got there, when I receive bounce, point in direction, repeat until, et cetera. And 
this is this is going to be whenever the ball is going to bounce okay and we want to handle it the ball is going to bounce two different times it's going to either bounce when it hits the paddle or it's going to bounce when it hits one of the bricks does that make sense yes okay so what we want to do is when we receive bounce and hopefully you found that we want to point in direction 180 minus the direction what this means is when it either hits the paddle or when it hits a brick we don't want it to just come straight down we want it to come randomly basically so we're taking 180 degrees from whatever direction we're currently in so it could be 180 from over here or over here or if the paddle is over here or if the paddle is over here etc and okay. then as long we want to keep going until we're not touching the paddle anymore we want to move 10 steps so this is going to handle us hitting that paddle okay you have all that code wait now i gotta get the repeat until okay remember the repeat until you're gonna to have to go and find a knot block and that's way down here put that in and then the number 180 minus then you've got to come up here and i think it's in the blue area here in motion there is a direction variable on the very bottom. That's what you want to put in here. Okay. But don't just type in the, the word direction is what I'm saying. I see, I saw it at the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> and with a knot here, the touching paddle is right on the sensing. <clears throat> okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> so okay. next, next, we want to do this. This says, this is going to check and if we fall if the ball falls below so if it's here but it falls below the paddle we've lost so that's a when clicked and then in a forever loop if the y position is less than 150 then we broadcast show game over which will make that red thing come up okay <clears throat> All right, you have that, or are you still putting in the code? Still putting it in the code. Okay. Okay, I'm done. Okay, then we've got our last one, so I'm gonna bring this up. And what is this doing? Well, let's just, let's just before you type it in, let's just break it down. This is saying when clicked, we want the ball to start right in the middle. All right. Okay. And then notice when I click where it says point in direction 135. See if I click here, looks almost like a clock. It's telling me that the ball is going to fall down to the bottom right. You don't have to do that. You could put a random number in there, but and and then but but I want to make sure that we're set for the game. And in fact, for me. I need more than, I need about three seconds. The people this morning were telling me they were putting in there 0 0.5 seconds. And that brings up a really important point that I mentioned this morning and I want you to hear it. And that is this, I'm not trying to confuse you, but if I put this in there, does it make sense to you that I'm gonna get one of 10 values? Does that make sense? No. I'm gonna get either a one or a two, or a three, or a four, or a five, or a six, or a seven, or an eight, or a nine, or a 10. Does that make sense? Yeah. If I change this to 100, I'm gonna get one of 100 values. Mm -hmm. But if I put in this, which is totally legal to do, now I'm gonna get a lot more possibles. I could get 1.6, 100.7, et cetera. So if you, if you are playing a game and you truly want the game to be random, when you do this, if you're going to write a game in Scratch, you should put at least a point zero in there on each one of them. All right? Okay. The other thing I mentioned this morning, and I, when I think of these things, I mention them just so you hear them. The way that most computer programming languages work Really, I, out of all the languages that I know, as far as I know, every one of those languages has a different method, function, or block like this. 
that will allow you to create a random number. But Scratch is a little bit different because in other languages, when you create a random number, it actually creates a random number that is between zero and less than one. So all the way up to like 0 0.9999999, almost forever. All right. And the, okay. reason I'm, the reason I'm telling you that is typically in most other languages, if you want, if you want to uh, make that a whole number, like, like if we just wanted this to be one to a hundred, for example, all right, then what you'd have to do is you'd have to do some math in order to do that. Scratch has set it up this way instead. All right, I mean, literally what I'm telling you then is if I put a zero here and right here, I put random and I put point and I'm just going to put in here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's how a true random number function works. All right, just so you're aware of that. Okay. All right. So we're having it point in the direction. I'll have it wait. And then we've got a forever loop. So remember, this is the ball. If the ball is on the edge, we want it to bounce. If the ball is touching the paddle, we want it to bounce. All right. So I don't know if you've put that in. I'll give you a minute. And if you would, then go ahead and put that in. I'll put it in. Did you say you've got it in? Yeah. Okay. So then what's left is the brick. And the brick has got one, I think it's just two things of code. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring that one up here. In fact, I'll put it up in the middle here. And I'm going to bring the other one under it. And then I'm going to just make them bigger. I think I told you this before, but if I didn't, if I want to make this bigger, I can either hold down on my shift key, use the wheel on my mouse, well, a control key rather, use the wheel on my mouse and make it bigger. Or I can use these things down here. That's the, that's the, whoop, that's the zoom button. Okay. I'm going to click in, on the zoom button here and make this one bigger. All right, so again, before you type it in, let's go over the code and, and talk about what it does. This is for the brick. So the first thing it's gonna do is it's going to make the brick 50% of its size because you know it's, it's pretty big right now, it really and truly is. So that'll make it half its size. This next line here that says go to X minus 200, 140, that puts the, the brick right up here, way up in the upper left-hand corner, okay? Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called clone that brick. All right. This looks like it's an error. I think that goes in here. All right. We're going to clone the brick, which means we're going to make how many copies? Four times seven or 28 copies of this. All right. And the way that you typically do this is these clones, so these copies, they don't show, clones do not show until clones do not show until the program's running. So if I left the original in there, I'd have 29 bricks instead of 28. This is my original one, and I'd have 28 copies. Okay. All right. So I hide the original one here, and then I tell it to make these 28. So what this what this code that's here will do or should do is when I run the program. That made these. See that? Yes. Okay. And where am I? Oh. Where am I? I think. Oh, I'm right here. All right. So there's a repeat loop, and inside of the repeat loop is another repeat loop. All right. So you want to bring out one of those repeats, and that's over in your control. You want a repeat until, I'm just, I'm sorry, not a repeat until the repeat one, the first one up here, right near the top of your control, and change the number to four, and then immediately put another repeat inside of it. And change the number there to seven. Four, okay. Then up in your events, you want to go down near the very bottom, and somewhere in here, I think it's here, it's either there or it's in here, there is create clone of myself. In fact, it's at the bottom, at almost at the very bottom of your controls. You want create control or create clone of myself. That 
So you should have a repeat four inside of there. You should have a repeat seven. In the repeat seven, you should have create clone of myself followed by change X by 65. So that'll make the first brick and then it'll change X by 65. So the next brick is 65 pixels over. Okay. So these two things, those two things should be inside of the repeat seven, like we've got right here. So this right here is going to handle each row. Then at the bottom nub here for the repeat seven, at the very bottom, you want to add in there change Y by minus 30, set X to minus 200. The change Y by minus 30 is going to move you down a row. The change X to two, negative 200 is going to move you back over to the beginning. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, okay, I'm done. All okay. right. Then the other code that we want to write for this is right here. It's when I start as a clone, and, th and that is over here near the bottom of your controls. It's one of those with a little nub on the top, so it's got to be at the beginning. What that says is every time I create a new clone, show me and then make a forever loop. Okay. And then this, as you probably guessed, this is handling the scoring right there. So it says if, and this is in sensing, if I'm touching the tennis ball, then change my score by one. In other words, I just got a point. And broadcast bounce, because I want it, it right now, it has just hit the brick. So I want it to broadcast bounce and I want the, the, that brick to go away. So I delete the clone. Okay. And ideally, at least, we've got all of our code in there. So if you go in, you should do a, a save, of course, first and try to run it and see if indeed it runs correctly. Again, I'm not very good at it, to be honest with you. Not very dexterous. Are you, is it setting what? it up correctly? Wait, can I see the code one more time? Sure can. This code or tell me what you want to see? Oh, this, this one. This is the brick code. Okay, I'm done with it. Okay, when you run it, does it work? Yes. Because most people today, when we were going through this, they were going too fast and they were not looking like, for example, what I just showed you in here, a lot of people saying, instead of saying set X to, they were saying, uh, not set X to, but like change X by or whatever. And it was goofing everything up. So they were getting stuff drawn all over the place. Oh. All right. So okay. the, the other one, and I'm going to show this one tomorrow. Again, I think I said this to you already, but I'm going to say it again. And that is when I did this yesterday um, and I was working on it, my internet went down at home because of the rain. So I wasn't able to finish everything. So I told the people this morning, I'm going to finish this and go over it for the first half hour tomorrow. This is the one that I, I, it's juiced up. In other words, we added stuff to it. So when you look, I changed the background and that's ugly. I, I was showing them different backgrounds before. But if you look on here, you'll notice there's music now. Watch, watch the paddle when it hits. And you'll notice how it changes color. Mm -hmm. All right. But what I'm going to do tomorrow when we do this is I'll show you real quick. Because this is what I didn't, I, what happened was, just so you know, when I did this yesterday, this is what I changed. I changed the background, and the background I changed, I didn't use this one. I actually, whoops, I don't want to, I changed the background to one where I thought would actually make it a little harder. So I went to backgrounds here, and I picked, I picked the one that is right 
here that's called raise. I kind of like that one better. All right, so when I ran it, mm -hmm. it looked like this, okay? And then I added the music. I already, you could already hear that. And I set it up so that every single time you come in and, you, and the paddle touches the ball, the paddle changes color. What I want to do tomorrow also is I also want to make the tennis ball change color and I want to make a sound effect, maybe a couple different ones, when the paddle hits and I want a sound effect when the ball hits the bricks. And I want the bricks to kind of animate or ghost in and ghost out. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. All right, so I didn't get, what actually what happened and I want to explain this to you because this happened today in class. In class today, we were about, we, we, we go from nine until about 10 and then take a 10 minute break. After we got back from our break, I was working, we were finishing up the original one. And what happened was I had people yelling to me, hey, hey, I lost the sound for a minute. I lost your picture for a minute. I lost this, I lost that. Scratch occasionally goes into, well, I, I call it this, it's not an official term, it goes into what's called worry mode. And you get a message that comes up here, that comes up on the screen right here, that says there was a problem. And it says you can no longer share, you can no longer save. That's what happened to me this morning. That's also what happened to me before the internet went down yesterday. So I'd made all these changes, but then I didn't have a chance to save them. And since I didn't have an internet, I couldn't create it again. All right, mm. so, I, so I'm going to do that. I'm gonna do that um, tomorrow. Uh, and, and that's what I'm gonna go over for the first half hour or so. And I'll put a link to that one out there. So if you wanna remix that one, you would be able to. Now, what I'm asking people then to do for tomorrow. All right, and again, it, it's, it's Friday. If you're like, you know what, I've had enough. You don't have to do anything. but I would start by going to the ideas thing that's right here under scratch.mit.edu. And there's a bunch of tutorials that are under here. So let's say that Ty decides he wants to create a story. You can click there and it'll run you through the steps in the tutorial on how you can create a story. You don't have to use this stuff. Of course, you could use, you could either use the, the, the sprites that are built in or you could create your own, all right? Okay. So if you didn't want to do that, there's music ones, there's animations, there's a regular like chase game, et cetera. Maybe you've seen that game, I think it's called Turtle, when a turtle is trying to cross the street and cars are coming. You could, yes. you could do your own version of that, for example, all right? And um, if, if that doesn't float your boat enough, you could go over to explore. And there's a bunch of things here. So maybe you start looking through here. And there's more, as it says, that you can load in. So let's just assume that you like this grassland one. So you can click on it. Of course, when you click on it, you know this already now. You can remix it if you want. Mm -hmm. All right? And notice it says here, the project can detect who is using it through the username. To hide your identity, slide out. Well, that's not that big a thing, but what is big is this. When, when you go in and you bring one of these up, look under the instructions here, because these instructions don't always copy over. And it really, if you decide you're gonna remix someone else's program, that's great, not a problem. But notice they gave thanks to other people. And mm -hmm. you, re you really should give the same thanks, even though these people didn't help you, they help the person or persons who helped you. Does that make sense? Yes. You don't have to do it. I can't force you to, and I wouldn't even if I could. But it's a nice thing to do. It's just, it's kind of, be, it's, it's, what, it's what's referred to in here as coding etiquette. All right, you're thanking people that have helped you. Now, finally, then, let's say you decide that you, uh, you don't want to do any of those. So let's assume you want to do some kind of a, I don't know, a football game. So I could come in here and I can type in scratch football game. All right. And I can come in here, football games on scratch. 
All right. And you'll notice here's one, for example, and I'm not saying I did, haven't even looked at this. I don't know if it's fun. I have no idea. It's called fun football game. All right. But what I want to be able to do, and I know you've seen this before already. So what I want to be able to do is on Monday, I want to create one of these things like you see, do you see on the screen right now, ladies and gentlemen up on top here? Yes. Okay. I'm going to change this, of course, to 2020 here and here. And it's going to say, ladies and gentlemen, your 2020 Rankin Technical College Scratch Programming Campers. Now, you, I think you sent me or your mom sent me your picture. I've had a few other people send me pictures. If you don't mind, I'll put your picture in here. All right? You can. Okay, thank you. And like I said, two or three other pick people have sent them to me, and I told them they've got until Monday. If they don't, I'm, I don't have name tags, but I'll just put in something like, for example, let's say that Megan didn't send me in. It'll look just like this. So I'll have that. I'll make the changes for 2020 and, and, and in here, and I'll put in pictures of everybody. What I'd like to do then is under the what we learned this week, this is going to have a link in here. It'll probably look like the scratch cat, and it'll link the scratch. But what I want to do then is I want to list, let's say all 12 people who are in the class do this. I want to have 12 hyperlinks in here, so you'll have to share your project. So I want all 12 hyperlinks. I'll take a screenshot and have a little image of each person's program, but I want people to see. So under what we learned this week, I want to show what you did. I don't have to come in here and broadcast what I did. I want to broadcast what you did. So I want to be able to say something in here like, here are, here, uh, on the last day of class, students created their own projects. Here are some examples. If I get 12 of them, fantastic. I'll put 12 of them in here. If I get two, fine. I'll put two in here. Does all that make sense? Yes. Then at the bottom, under the instructors, that's me. Mr. Gudmiston didn't teach this year, so I'm going to remove his picture, probably keep mine in there or take another one. I don't know. And then put this down at the bottom. So in 45 minutes, basically, you've done what it took them two and a half hours to do. All right. Okay. So tomorrow I'm going to go and show you my juiced version of this program. All right. And then the rest of the time I'm going to say, okay, work on your project. And by now, and you, you sound like a very intelligent person. I'm not just saying it. You really do. All right. So you should know the kind of things that you'd want to put in there. You'd want to put, you know, one or more things from motion. You'd want to do something aesthetics, you know, have somebody say something or whatever. You know, you might want to, you might, you, you'll want to use shows and hides. It'd be nice to put in some music or some kind of sound. Of course, you'll have a when click. You may or may not end up cloning something. You should broad, be broadcasting so your sprites can talk to one another. You'll probably end up having waits, repeats, forevers, ifs, maybe an if then else. You may again, may or may not have clones. You should do something with the sensing. I didn't show this, but you can sense by color. So for instance, let's say in here that, I, that this thing was filled with a bunch of different colors. I could say if I'm touching green, do something or whatever. All right. Instead of touching, you know, like this, where we have, you know, game over, mouse pointer, et cetera. All right. You might want to ask the user something or not. We did nothing in this class with mouse events. You know, you can set it up so every time your mouse moves, you could have something happen if you wanted to do that. All right. And you can change your backdrops. You can, you can go out and create your own backdrops, all right? You can either Google them or you can create your own and then you can bring them in because remember under backdrops here, the last thing that's there is upload backdrop. So you can make a drawing like a ping or whatever and put that in there as your backdrop if you want to do that. All right, I'd imagine you're gonna use some operators. It'd be nice to use something with, with random numbers, all right? 
ands and ors and nots, I hopefully you've got a good idea of, of how that works now. And you probably will want to add variables. All right, one thing I did not talk about, I mentioned this to people yesterday, I'll say it to you. I'm going to create something and then I'm going to get rid of it. If you click make a list right here, and I'm just going to call this uh, my list. It's a dumb name, but so you see it. The list comes in right up here. So you remember yesterday when we were going over the Magic 8-Ball program and we had 16 different balls and they were numbered 0 through yes. um, 15? We could yes. have done that. We could have come in here and literally typed in 0, you know, et cetera. So I could have added one, you know, here. You could come in here and we could have made 16 things in our own list if we wanted to do that. So under add thing to list, I could come in here and then, you know, I can add whatever I want. So I can add a whole bunch of these if I want to. All right. And notice it changes the length. Okay. I can come in here once it's been added and I can click to remove it. You don't have to use any of these because again, we didn't really go over these. All right. But if you decide that you want to do that, of course you can. But I'd like to see people use as much of this stuff as possible. One more thing, and then I'm finished. I don't know if she sent it to you or not. Did you get Did you get sent in the mail like a packet of information? Um, from Rankin. No. You yes, know, I had, did. It, it had the shirt in it and some other stuff. Yes, I had the shirt. Okay, but uh, e either you got sent to you, or you will get sent to you, or online you're going to be emailed. You're either going to get a hard copy or an electronic copy of a survey. It'll say, how was the class? What did you learn? What did you think of the instructor? I'm not going to tell you anything to say. If you thought the instruction was terrible, put that down. If you thought the instruction was great, put that down. If, but what I, there's, there's two things I want to mention. One is what I'd like you to put in there. They have a thing at, should have a thing at the bottom for comments. We don't know one year from now, we don't know if we're going to have a vaccine for the COVID virus or we're not going to have a vaccine. So on the bottom, if you think it worked that this class worked really well, not being in a classroom, but being online like this, please put that down. If you think it worked okay or it didn't work that well, and I really wish it would have been in a classroom, put that down. Because what's going to happen is depending on how COVID-19 is handled in the next year, Ms. Bragg is going to have to decide, can we put these classes in the classroom and invite people in, or do we try it online? And I told the same thing to the people today, and the reason, again, I'm telling it to you is what I don't want to have happen is I don't want people to have hated this online format <clears throat> and then not let Rankin know that. And I don't want people to have loved this online format and not let Rankin know that. So Ms. Bragg, and you know, she's the one, she was at the bottom of that thing, but, but um, she is the one who plans these out every single year. All right, I have no idea if this worked well for you or it didn't work well for you. I will tell you though, that when we've had this in the classroom, it's not run nearly as smooth. You know, all the stuff I'm giving you, this would have taken from nine o'clock until three o'clock with an hour lunch. Why? Because people are constantly, I got to go to the bathroom. I want to get a drink. I want to get some, you know, I want to get a soda. Or, or they're, they're taking their, their uh, in, in the classroom, all of the chairs are on wheels. And every year we have people who do races. They, they go and they start, the, they start it going, they jump on the chair. Last year we had a guy we had to literally kick out of the class because he, he liked one of the girls in the class and he kept stealing her phone. You know, we don't have that kind of stuff when we're working online. On the other hand, you may or may not have heard this because I don't know if you, I don't think you've been in the afternoon every day, but you might have been. But in the morning, what happens is I mute the students and then I unmute them when I start. But like today we had, we had some student, he kept saying, dad, I, I can't find what the download was. And he was yelling to his dad. His dad was yelling back. And I eventually had to find out which student that was, and I had to mute them. 
And he figured that out. So he unmuted me and they were still talking. So what I'm saying is the bad thing about doing it this way is the fact that when we do it in, in, in like this, I can't see you. So I'm not getting any visual feedback. Plus some people have had problems with the email stuff and I've had to put stuff in chat windows. If I wanna put stuff in, if I wanna chat with you, all right? So for instance, just to show you this, I don't, cause I don't know if you've seen it or not, but I'm gonna stop my share for a second and I'm gonna change my share so you can see this. You've already seen this stuff right here, this stuff. But I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna copy it to the clipboard, I'm gonna stop my share and I'm gonna to go to chat on the very bottom. And now I'm gonna put this in there and hit enter. Now I just put two links to, to both those projects in there as a share. I had to do that for some people because their email stuff wasn't working correctly. I sent it out to everybody and they'd say, I didn't get this. So again, what I'm telling you is we had to spend a lot of time doing stuff in the classroom that we didn't have to do online and we spent a lot of time online doing stuff we didn't have to do in the classroom all right so i want to know and so does ms bragg want to know did this does this kind of a setup work for you so like i said if you have not already gotten a piece of paper you'll probably either get one or you'll get something online and again I'm just, I, I can't beg, but I'm really asking if you could do one thing for me and fill that out. Just be honest. But I fill will. It out, fill, I, I'm sure you will. But I'm just saying, I, I, this is what I'm telling everybody. Fill it out, be honest, and fill it out completely. Because next year at this time, I don't know what your age is. I think they let people do it until they're like in eighth grade. But what we've had in the past is last year we did a thing, a web design class using bootstrap the year before that we did a python class before that the year before that we did android app inventor which is very similar to scratch and before that we did just regular web design with html css and javascript we will do one of those next year and i'm not sure like i said depending on covid we will either do one of those next year where when we do it it will be done online or it will be in the classroom. But last thing, so again, if, if 12 people send back their surveys and they say, I hated this classroom, they probably won't run one of these in the classroom. So you guys, for lack of better words, are deciding the future of what's gonna go on here. You guys and the pandemic are deciding the future, okay? okay. Do you have any questions on anything at all that we've gone over today? Uh, can I see the ball? You sure um, can. It's like the third one with the... Um... All right, give me just a sec. So let's see. All right, the tennis ball? Yes. And it's the bottom make, one right let me there. make this a little smaller. Now I can make this. Whoops, I can make this bigger. So I grab that one and make it bigger. Is that the one okay. you want here? Yes. I had messed up on one thing. Not a problem at all. And that's one thing I've liked about this. In the classroom, what I've always found is there's a lot of students who are just they're quiet people. And they might be having trouble, but they don't even want to really raise their hand. But here, and I think part of it is because, you know, it, it because you're a little more anonymous here, that people are willing to ask questions. This has been a terrific class. You've been terrific. The morning people have been terrific because when they don't get something, they're like, wait, 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 don't go on. I've got a question. That's what I need to hear. Nor, I think you've heard this already, but normally we have two people teach this class, me mm -hmm. and Mr. Gudmiston or me and Mr. Smith. And one of us teaches and the other one walks around the classroom. Are you getting everything? Do you have any questions? And it's just been me. So when there's a question, we've had to stop. And that's fine. I have no problem stopping. But in order to stop, I've got to know that people have questions. And it's the same thing I say to my full-time college students. I'll say, are there any questions? And I'll wait. And if no one answers, I'll sometimes say to them, okay, since no one has asked any questions, 
I'm going to assume that you all understand what I just went over. Sometimes after I say that, then a hand will go up. Well, I guess I've got a question on this. Okay. If you do, you have to ask. And you've done a really good job of when you've had questions of asking. Do you have any more questions for today? No. Okay. Then we did it in an hour, but that's really all that I had for you. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow then, okay? Okay. Okay. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.